Shu man kato shu. Dai san ju ni soku. Ranan uku. Entangling vines, case 32. Ranan's being and non being. Choke Ranan of Fukushu addressed the assembly, saying, Being and non being are like vines clinging to a tree. Sozan Kyonin, hearing of this, said, I have a turning phrase for that old man. I must call on him. So at the end of the training period, he went to the province of Min to visit Choke Ranan, who was also known as Isan Ranan, because he came from Isan in Hunan to become priest of Choke Temple at the invitation of layman Hikyu, who was governor of Min at the time. When Sozan arrived, Ranan was plastering a wall. Sozan asked, Being and non-being are like vines clinging to a tree. Did you say that? Yes, Ranan replied. If suddenly the tree falls and the vines wither, Sozan said, where do being and non-being go? Ranan threw down his plaster tray and gave a loud laugh, then starting for his quarters. Sozan said, I have sold my possessions and traveled 3,000 ri here for the sake of this matter. Why don't you give me an explanation? Ranan said to his attendant, bring some money and give it to this little monk. Then he turned to Sozan and said, there's a one-eyed dragon who will set you right on this matter someday. Later, Sozan went to Myosho Tokken, who was blind in one eye, and related the above story. Myosho said, Ranan's the real thing from head to toe. Only he has never met a true friend. Sozan asked, if suddenly the tree falls and the vines wither, where do being and non-being go? Yosho responded, that would make Ranan laugh again. At that moment, Sozan was awakened and said, there was a dagger in Ranan's laughter right from the very start. Later, Daiye Soko, while still a student under Engo Kokugon, was placed in the attendance quarters and given the position of attendant without duties. Every day, Engo would have him come to his room for instruction, just like the officials who were Engo's lay students. All Engo ever said was, being and non-being are like vines clinging to a tree. Whenever Daie opened his mouth to respond, Engel would cut him off saying, that's no good. Nearly half a year went by like that. 
One day, while Engo was having dinner with the official Jo Hyoshi, Daie, his chopsticks in hand, forgot to eat his rice. Engo looked over at Daie, then turned to Jo and said, this fellow is practicing boxwood Zen. Daie explained to Engo that he felt like a dog eyeing a fry pan full of hot food. Engo replied, this is hard to penetrate and hard to grasp, like a vajra or a chestnut burr. Later, Daie went to Engo and said, I heard that you once asked Goso about being and non-being. Do you remember the master's answer? In reply, Engo only laughed. Daie said, since you asked in front of the assembly, surely even now, there is someone who remembers. Engo replied, when I asked about the statement, being and non-being are like vines clinging to a tree, Goso answered, try to describe it and it cannot be described. Try to portray it and it cannot be portrayed. When I asked, what if the tree suddenly falls and the vines wither? Goso said, they come down together. When Daya heard the story, he cried, I've got it. Engo said, I fear you haven't thoroughly penetrated this koan. Daya said, Please, master, question me in any way you wish. Engo proceeded to question him, and Daie replied without hesitation. Engo said, Today, you see that I haven't deceived you. He then confirmed and conferred upon Daie the record of the true school of Rinzai, designating him secretary and had him lecture to the other monks. Good afternoon. On this third day of our Nyogen Senzaki session, what an interesting way to spend our time digging into this matter. And the longer we dig into this matter, the more intricate the connections reveal themselves. It is quite amazing how the universe lines up events and sometimes stories. Yesterday in Hokuto Sensei's talk, we heard about stories and the koan that is presented today is even more than just one story. I have to admit it's the, it is the longest koan that I've ever had to speak on. It goes over several generations of masters. And don't be, don't be concerned. Uh, you will not be questioned who said what to whom, when. 
And it's also a wonderful example for what at times this practice asks us to do. For somebody sitting in this spot here, having to give yet another trash talk, it is still important that I sift through that kind of garbage that comes through my mind and pull out the things that are most presentable and even go and pay respect to all these predecessors who are a wonderful thing to do. Because even I, when I read that first koan, what, who said what, who is this, who is that? And we will look at that a little bit today. But be aware, it is about the relationship and about the way how we interact between Zen practitioners, between Zen practitioners and the world. And that's one of the wonderful things we can learn in these stories that make up Rinzai Zen. On Friday, when we began the session, Shingero, she gave a Teisho on one of the ox herding pictures. And we got an immediate illustration and demonstration how elusive that ox is. It suddenly disappeared. The picture froze on the camera and the sound went away. And here we sat, knowing that some were able to hear it. Those who were not connected over some kind of electronic path. And others like us, we were sitting here and what now? The ox disappeared. And just when we acknowledged the, the disappearance of the ox, it reappeared. Some could catch it, others could not. So many of us are hoping that some device was able to catch the traces of this ox so we can listen to it at a later time. Before going into this long story, let me acknowledge one more important aspect of this day today. Today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers, male mothers, female mothers, non-binary mothers, everybody, we all are mothers. In this practice, we learn that we give birth to this world. The universe, the rainbow with all its colors, the light of day, the darkness of night, the 10,000 things. In Zazen, when we sit down and body and mind fall off and the world disappears, we become again pregnant with everything, nothing left out. And as we reappear, we give birth once again to this universe. That is an awesome responsibility. There is nothing in this world we are not responsible for. Like mothers, 
we have to tend to all our children. I'm sure many of us know the Tibetan teaching from the Vajrayana Buddhism, that everything that exists in some previous instance was our mother. Here in the Zen tradition, we go so far to say that we are the mother of everything. And that completes the relationship. Mother Earth and Father Time conceive and we appear giving birth to this. Happy Mother's Day. Shall we start our journey into this long story? Yes, let us begin. Where does this koan come from? It comes from the Shumon Kato Shu, the collection of koans that's called Entangling Vines. Usually, the koans that are in here are shorter than the cases we find in the other large collections in the Mumonkan, the Gateless Gate, or that we find in the Blue Cliff Record, the Hikigan Roku, where you find pointers, the main case, you might find poetry and other added text. In this case, this is just the main case and it is long. If you had a chance to look at it at Daibosatsu Zendo where it was printed out, it's a lot of Chinese characters. Usually it's just a couple of lines. So for everybody else, you can see how many little characters there are in this case. It's a lot. Actually, the case appears in two collections and not as a whole, but as part A and part B. The first part uh, under the title Ranan's Mountain actually appears in the Shoyo Roku as case 87. And there is another collection called the Daitoshi Roku where the second part uh, is in chapter 17. So a long koan and instead of presenting you everybody who appears in this koan, which would be very confusing, this time let us go through it. And as we encounter the various characters, we'll take a little trip to the side into their life story. One story leads to another story. And they all need to be told. So here's the first sentence. Choke Ranan of Fuxu addressed the assembly saying, being and non-being are like vines clinging to a tree. So who is Choke Ranan? Choke Ranan had several names. He was known as Choke Dayan, or also as Isan Ranan, or Isan Dayan. He lived from 793 until 883 common time. He only appears in one more case in this collection, Shumon Katoshu, that is case 209. This is case 32. He was born in the province that is called Fujian nowadays, and his family name was Chen. He studied under the eminent master Hyakujo Eikai. So here is a wonderful revealed connection. 
This is said to have happened between Ranan and his teacher, Yakujo Ikai. Ranan asked Yakujo, I am trying to understand Buddha. What does that mean? Very interesting question. Because Ranan is not asking, what is Buddha? He's asking about his trying to understand Buddha. I'm trying to understand Buddha. What does that mean that I'm trying to understand Buddha? Yakujo answered, you are like somebody looking for an ox while riding on an ox. Ranan asked, once one realizes that, that one is looking for an ox while riding on an ox, what then? Yakujo said, ride the ox like somebody on a homebound journey. Ranan continued, how shall I keep and tend to the ox until the end of this homebound journey? Hyakujo said, just like an ox herd who with a whip in their hand watches the ox and doesn't let, let it graze on other people's fields. Ranan received the teaching and never ventured to seek again. Friday, we heard about the ox. Saturday, we heard about Master Rinzai. Why do you seek? Here, this wonderful interaction, teaching, making relationship between Hyakujo Eikai and Ranan is very, very good example of bringing that together. So Ranan, he eventually received transmission from Hyakujo Eikai. And he went to Mount E, which of course would be called Isan, to help his Dharma brother, his Dharma brother who also was a successor to Yakujo Eikai, by the name of Isan Reiyu, who we have encountered in many koans. And he helped Isan Reiyu to build Isan Reiyu's new monastery. When Isan Reyu passed on into the great transformation, Ranan became the abbot. And from his having learned from Hyakujo Eikai using the metaphor of the ox, he continued to use that metaphor in his teaching. One day, Ranan said the following. I have been living on Mount E for 30 years and I ate the mountain's food and crapped the mountain's shit, but I have not been studying the mountain's Zen. When the ox strayed off the path and went into the meadow, I pulled it back on its nose ring. When the ox entered others' fields, I tamed it with my whip. For quite some time, the ox has become gentle and has been accepting my guidance without contention. Now it has just become the white ox on the bare ground. 
an image for our original nature, for our honrai no memmoku, the original face. And the ox is always with me, showing itself unmistakably every day. Even if I tried to chase it off, it would not budge. At the end of his career, Ranan returned to the place of his ordination, Mount Obaku, where he died at the age of 91. So this is Ranan who said to his assembly, being and non-being are like vines clinging to a tree. And apparently in China at that time, the teaching of Zen traveled far and wide because it came to Sozan Kyonin. And we are learning about Sozan Kyonin that he traveled 3,000 ri. So that's a far, far distance for this kind of teaching to travel. Being and non-being are like vines clinging to a tree. So Zan Kyonin is the second person who we encounter here in the first part. So who is he? So Zan Kyonin lived from 837 until 909. He appears also in Shumon Kato Su, case 132. He was born in the Ganyang in today's province of Shanxi. His family name was Li. And one day a pilgrimage brought him to Kyorin Chowon. And he joined a monastery later under the famous Tozan Ryokai. After Tozan Ryokai passed away, he went on and visited many masters, such as Isan Reu, who we just heard about, the Dharma brother of Ranan, Umon Bunen, and also Kasan Zenne. He led a temple in today's Shanxi until his death at age 72. Another interesting thing that is reported about him is that he was of a rather slight build and he was short. So this Sozan Kyonin heard about the saying, being and non-being are like vines clinging to a tree. Hearing of this, he said, I have a turning phrase for that old man. So you know about turning phrases, turning phrases, turning words the different meanings of this term, but it can be either looking from the point of view of the expression of a specific aspect that turns with the koan we are working with is an expression of the person expressing it, but it can also be a turning word that is given, offered at the right time to somebody who would benefit from it at that time. So turning words. So he knows I have to say something about this and something that saying about it might be a question. I must call on him. So at the end of the training period, he went to the province of Min to visit Choke Ranan. And then comes the little detail that we spoke about that he had different names, Isan Ranan, and that he was at the Choke temple. Therefore, he was called Choke Ranan. A long journey occurred in between. When Sozan finally arrived in the Min province, Ranan was plastering a wall. You know how you have the plaster on the board and then you throw it up on the wall and you spread it. 
of course, he's a Zen teacher. Is it just plaster that he's throwing on the wall and seeing that it sticks? Or is it his teaching of the Dharma at the same time in this activity of something very, very ordinary? So Sozan arrived and sees the master, sees a person, he doesn't know yet that it is Ranan, plastering that wall. And he asks, being and non-being are like vines clinging to a tree. Did you say that? No, hello, excuse me. Sir, are you Mr. Ranan? No, already instant recognition. Did you say that? Yes. Ranan replied. And here comes the turning phrase that precipitated this journey of 3,000 Li, 1,500 kilometers, almost 1,000 miles. If suddenly the tree falls and the vines wither, where do being and non-being go? Ranan just threw down, threw down his plaster tray and had a big laugh. Then turned around and went towards his quarters. Hold on, hold on, Sozan. Don't just run away. I have sold my possessions and traveled 3,000 li here for the sake of this matter. Why won't you give me an explanation? Have you ever felt that way? We also heard yesterday Hokuto Sensei reading about somebody selling everything, horse and elephant, house, everything. That's one way. Here it stands for Sozan's determination of giving everything up to go there after this very matter that he had to bring forth in front of Ranan, who said, being and non-being are like vines clinging to a tree. And then he gets turned down, just drops his tray with the mortar and laughs. And apparently Sozan felt laughed at. You know the feeling, probably what it feels like to be laughed at. Then he turns around and just walks away. No, hold on, hold on. I've sold all my possessions and traveled here 3,000 li just for the sake of this matter. Why won't you give me an explanation? Ranan said to his attendant, bring some money and give it to this little monk. Now, of course, we could feel right away, oh, he's continuing to belittle. But there's absolutely no belittlement here. First of all, we learned through the biography in the Keito Dentoroku, that Sozan was short. He was a little person. You came all the way here. Let me give you some money. You sold everything. But there's something else in here that is not said. 
because Ranan already gave something that is way beyond any kind of money or thing that could be given. Here, have some money so you can go and buy yourself something to eat on your trip as you go on. And he turned to Sozan and directly addressed him, helping him. There is a one-eyed dragon who will set you right on this matter someday. It reminds me very much on that deep belief that Nyogen Senzaki manifested throughout his life. That even the person who beat him in the morning, one day will become a Buddha. So Sozan went on and one day he arrived at Myosho Tokken. That's yet another person. Myosho Tokken, he lived in the 9th to the 10th century. We have no specific dates, but what we know about him is that he was a successor to a monk by the name of Razan Dokan. And he was known by the name of the one-eyed dragon because he was blind in his left eye. So Sozan arrived here. And he told the above story, what had happened between Ranan and his questioning. And the one-eyed dragon said, ah, oh, Ranan, he's the real thing, head to toe. Only he's never met a good friend. Here you come to see me, but you have not realized that you already had the opportunity to make full relationship with Ranan. But you were not ready to meet him as a true friend, as a Kalyana Mitra. All of us here, we have to be our, each other's good Dharma friend. Kalyana Mitra is the Sanskrit term. True spiritual friends with openness, with respect, with dissolution of our own self-centered ideas of knowing, of not knowing, coming from that fundamental equality, from the principle that Haku in Zenji just told us in his Zazen Wasan that we just recited. Shujo Honrai Hotoke Nari. All sentient beings are fundamentally Buddhas. That's a true Kalyana Mitra. When we relate to each other in that way, that's a true Dharma friendship, manifesting that principle and the reality of complete equality. And from there, like a mother, we give birth to the functioning of various kinds. So when Ranan and Sozan met, that could have happened. And Myosho, though he had just one eye, saw it. The dragon eye, the one-eyed dragon, 
at times is also used in the Chinese Zen literature to describe the clear vision of the awakened Dharma eye. So after Myosho said, you met it, you didn't make the connection, dear friend. Sozan asked, if suddenly the tree falls and the vines wither, where do being and non-being go? The one-night dragon responded, that would make Ranan laugh again. Hearing that, finally the meeting happened. And Sozan realized, there was a dagger, there was a sword in Ranan's laughter right from the very beginning. When I came and I asked my conceptual question, in the embodiment of the activity of that, what happens when the tree falls down and when the vines wither, was right there manifest in front of me. I didn't see it, but it was a sword that even out of time, cuts my delusion. So what is that question we might ask? We have been talking about for the last half hour. The vines and the tree, being and non-being. Being and non-being. Phenomenon and noumion. Noumenon. There are other pairs we can list here. This and not this. The interrelationship between existence and non-existence. These vines of existing and non-existing are interrelated. All duality depends on each other. This defines that by not being that. The world we live in, where we have that manifest duality, is that world of that tree that holds up those vines. So they, in the same way, they hold up the tree. The tree holds up the vine and the vine holds up the tree. But then vines also are very important imagery in the study of Zen. Remember, this is called the Shumon Katoshu, entangling vines. These are vines that are expressions in words. The words that we see, koans are sometimes called entangling vines. Because there's an entanglement and there is, of course, the interrelationship between them. Words are expressions of ideas and abstractions. And they entangle us in the same way they entangled Sozan when he came to that question, what if that tree falls? What happens to those vines? Those vines, if you see them in a spatial sense, they open up that energetic field in between. That's how this world comes into existence. That's where opposition lies. But they are, that's also where complementarity lies. One thing that is this way completes that that is not this way. And the question for the Zen practitioners here is what happens when all of that falls away? And Ranan demonstrated it. 
right there. Without hesitation, without words, not entangling, not disentangling, but completely dissolving even the question. No more polarities. But this, what sometimes our self fears as cataclysmic, the complete disappearance. When I spoke about Mother's Day and Zazen, where our self disappears, the world disappears, body and mind fall off. the pregnancy with everything that comes into existence happens without distinction, no tree, no vines, no questions, no answers. And that is what Sozan realized at this time. But our koan continues. The story goes on to a different generation. Daie Soko, who studied with Engo Kokugon, who we know intricately and very intimately from the Hekigan Roku, the Blue Cliff Record. So let me just tell you a little bit about Engo, not too much because he is so well known. Engo appears in eight cases in the Shumon Katoshu. He was born in today's Sichuan province and his family name was Luo. He met Buddhism through a visit to temples and reading scriptures. And then he became very ill. After getting well, he decided to go on pilgrimage. And already most teachers affirmed his understanding until he came in front of Goso Hoen, who did not affirm his understanding. Engo felt angered and left. On his way out, Goso bid him farewell with the words, you will remember me when you get severely ill. And soon after, while on Mount Kin, Engo got very ill. And he remembered Goso Hoen's farewell words. He saw it as an indication to return. And he returned to Goso Hoen as a student. He became his successor, returned to his home province of Sichuan in 1102 to take care of his mother. He stayed with his mother until she passed and continued then to travel to many temples, giving lectures on this old case and that old case. And as we know, those presentations became the base of the Blue Cliff Record of the Heikigan Roku. The Emperor of China bestowed on him the purple robe and later several posthumous titles. Engo had 16 Dharma heirs. One of them was Dai Soko, who appears here, and also Kokyo Joryu, who you know from chanting his name every night in the Tedai Denpo, in the lineage chant that we have. So Daie Soko is the student and successor of Engo Kokugon. Engo Kokugon is the successor to Goso Horn, who we also know very well from many koans, including the one about the ox and the lattice window. So these are the people who appear here. 
So Daisoko, while still a student under Engo Kokugon, was placed in the attendance quarters and given a position. Every day Engo had him in his Doksan room. And he only said one thing, being and non-being are like vines clinging to a tree. As soon as Daye opened his mouth to respond, Engo would cut him off. Ugh, that's no good. Words will not do. Words will not bring that tree to fall. Words will not get you into that non-dual being. Not two, not one, not zero. And here's a testament to this kind of practice that Engo underwent. Half a year he did that, half a year. And one night while Engo was having dinner with an official, Dae was just sitting there with his chopsticks in his hand and his rice, and he was so absorbed in his practice that he forgot to eat. An expression of what is necessary for us to truly get into this matter and what kind of determination is necessary. And the teacher observed it. He said to his guest, well, look at him. This guy is practicing boxwood then. Why boxwood? Now, boxwood is a type of plant that grows very, very, very slowly. And even in years that are dry, a boxwood might shrink rather than grow. So what Engo is being described here by his uh, teacher is your practice is very, very sincere, but not necessarily fast. And that's okay. So those of us who sit here and think, oh, I'm not getting anywhere. This is not doing anything. It's not happening. Trust in the box, would then. Get yourself to sit at the meal and be so deeply in your investigation of this matter that you forget to eat. And Engels spoke about his student here, and, and he said to the guest, you know, Boxwood Zen, right there. And later, Daye came to Engo and described this feeling he had when he was sitting there completely engaged in his investigation, looking at the score, not being able to approach it. And he compared it to the dog that sits in front of this pan that is full of this hot food that we can't turn away from but that is still too hot to just dig in. And I'm sure there are some amongst us here who have that same feeling at times. Another attempt was made. Daye goes to his teacher and says, wow, now come on, come on. Let's get to the, to the heart of this. What did your teacher tell you when you asked the question? Because I know you asked him this question. Do you remember the answer? How did Engo answer? He laughed. No, no, no. Come on, tell me. I know you know it. I know you remember it. You asked it in public in front of the assembly. Ah. Remember the word koan means public case. You asked it in front of the assembly. Come on, tell me. And so Engel replied about his interaction with his teacher, Gosho Hoan. When I asked him about the statement, being and non-being are like vines clinging to a tree, 
My teacher answered, try to describe it. It cannot be described. Try to portray it. It cannot be portrayed. Description, no. Portrayal, not enough. When I asked, what if the tree suddenly falls and the vines wither? Goso said, they come down together. Daye heard the story. And for him, this was a turning word. I've got it. He was examined by his teacher in detail and received his final approval and was bestowed the lineage, the true lineage of Master Rinzai. A long koan, a long journey from vines and the tree. What happens when the tree falls? What goes beyond the world of duality? What goes beyond separation? What goes beyond phenomenon, noumenon? That's the question. And in this time, we find ourselves, we see vines, we feel vines that might be so entangled that we feel choked at times. And we have to learn how to go beyond that and not just cling like the vines do to this side, to that side, to each other. And one of that clinging in that dualistic world is opposition. We feel that opposition is something that gets us away from that, that we don't want. But at the same time, in this dualistic world, opposing means to rely upon that opposition. In my personal history, in the recent past, losing family members, seeing millions of people die from a virus, victims of violence, and at times even opposition and strive within the ranks of really, really good people. The only expression I can find to that is time is too valuable to get caught up in that dependency of opposition. Let us not make opposition and pushing against the reason for us not to embrace and not to bring that tree to fall and to bring about a new birth, a new opportunity to heal, to embrace, to become pregnant again, give birth again and make all of it with the spirit of us being the mother of everything and everybody. The tree will fall, the vines will wither. A new tree will grow and new vines will come up. And this life as a human being is not to be taken casually. 
let's not just give it away in opposition. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>